everyone, and welcome to the Week 20 edition of Instant Replay, where I give you my take on the most controversial plays of the weekend. I'm Simon Bohr. We start with a goal line episode in Montreal, where the goal was not awarded after the ball is cleared off the line by the Montreal defender. Now, when video review officially launches beginning August 5th, this would absolutely be a reviewable incident since it's a goal situation, one of the four reviewable plays in video review. And if the VAR determines that a potential clear and obvious error was made based on the TV angles available, then a recommendation for a video review would be made to the head official. And you can't help but wonder whether this footage would be conclusive enough for the officials to overturn the no-goal decision made on the field. At least from my vantage point, based on the defender's position inside the goal, I thought it was a good goal for Christian Kohlmann, who would nonetheless proceed to score his first two MLS goals in the second half. There were plenty of talking points early on at Yankee Stadium where NYCFC wanted a penalty in the fourth minute. And although referee Alan Chapman makes the all-ball motion with his arms, indicating the defender got the ball, the replay seemed to indicate that he actually missed the ball and got the player, Yangel Herrera. Chapman doesn't call it, but I would have gone penalty there. This is also a play that can be looked at under video review because it involves a potential penalty kick. It was an eventful opening 12 minutes for Herrera, who in addition to that play, committed two bookable offenses to get himself sent off. We see the first one here, and here's the second one, and I think Chapman nailed both of these. They were both reckless fouls. And note, yellows and second yellows will not be reviewable when video review is here. But even down to 10 men, New York City FC would still win the match 2-1, and I thought Chicago were lucky not to have a player sent off. I'd argue that defender Joao Meira deserved his second yellow in stoppage time for this takedown of David Villa. Only one play to look at in Columbus. On this set piece in the 43rd minute, replay show Philly defender Joshua Yarrow with both arms around Cruz's Ola Camara, who hits the deck. No call from referee Silva Petrescu, although I thought that Camara had a very strong case for a penalty. We heard from Eric Waters on Twitter who noted that the LA Galaxy corner kick that led to their second goal at Gillette Stadium probably should not have been awarded. And the replays present a pretty strong case. It looks like the ball comes off the head of LA Galaxy for Jack McBean and should have been ruled a goal kick. But that's a tough call to make in real time. And keep in mind, corner kicks and set pieces in general will not be reviewable when video review comes online to BC Place, where the Portland Timbers beat their rivals Vancouver Whitecaps on the road. And although there was probably a foul committed in the moments before the Timbers game winner, when Zarek Valentin pushes Vancouver's Freddy Montero here, a full 20 seconds elapsed between that incident and the eventual goal. The momentary equalizer by the Whitecaps was also a talking point. Was Vancouver's Andrew Jacobson offside on the header from teammate Tim Parker? We don't have the best angle, but the one we do have creates some doubt. Assistant referee Cameron Blanchard had the best view, and he kept his flag down. Staying in Cascadia, Seattle versus San Jose was an overall smoothly managed match for referee Alan Kelly. Just one play to highlight, this 64th minute Anibal Godoy slide tackle on Gustav Svensson. It was a hefty challenge, and Godoy's studs were exposed, but after watching the replay a few times, it looks like a good challenge to me, despite the camera angle being partially blocked by the assistant referee. Good no-call by Kelly. To RFK Stadium, where the home team, DC United, were already down 3-0 in the 27th minute when they wanted a penalty for this challenge. But referee Marcos de Oliveira doesn't call it, and I think he's spot on. He makes the universal sign that Houston's Juan David Cabezas got all ball, poking it away from Ian Harks, and he's right from what I can tell. I'd say DC were the ones who risked giving away a penalty in the 65th minute. On this set-piece play, defender Kofi Opare has his hands all over Houston's Andrew Wenger, who stunned he didn't get the call. I felt Opare ran a big-time risk there. As did DC midfielder Jared Jeffrey, whose scissors tackle from behind on Alex I felt was really borderline. He got a yellow from the referee, but I would have gone straight red card for serious foul play, endangering the safety. Referee Juan Guzman had a big decision to make in the 26th minute at BMO Field, when Toronto defender Chris Mavinga comes flying in with this challenge on Colorado's Dominique Baggi. Mavinga gets a yellow card, but this was another borderline challenge and I would have been fine with a straight red since Mavinga comes in over the ball and endangered the safety. To the 54th minute, and a great decision by the referee Guzman. Toronto's Jay Chapman goes down in the box, but there's not enough there for the penalty, and Guzman doesn't go for it. Instead, he awards the free kick outside the box for a previous foul by Colorado's Mike Defont, the pull on the jersey. 
That's a harder call to make than it seems on replay. Next up, Minnesota, where the Loons are struggling big time to score goals, and they were hoping to get off the schneid with two penalty kick shouts against the New York Red Bulls. The first one came in the 26th minute, and this is really awkward by New York defender Damian Perinel. Watching the replay, I think the argument can be made that he in fact extends his arm in an attempt to impede the progress of the ball here, and he kind of succeeds. But referee Ilaru Grajera graces him and doesn't call the penalty. Then, in the 66th minute, it was Minnesota's Miguel Ibarra hoping for the PK call. But he doesn't get it, and the Red Bulls go down the other end and score their second goal, essentially putting the game away. But I think Grajera and his crew nailed the Ibarra call. New York defender Michael Murillo assumes position on Ibarra, and then Ibarra goes down and doesn't get the call. Red Bulls win 3-zip. To Orlando, we're in the second half visiting Atlanta, we're pushing forward. And forget the ball for a moment. Check out the middle of the frame. Look at how Orlando's Cristian Iguita slows down Atlanta's Tito Villalba by getting an arm around his head, and he also brings up his other arm toward Villalba's face. It wasn't caught by the officiating crew, and Iguita gets off scot-free. On the other end of the field, Orlando had an argument for a penalty when this Carlos Rivas shot caroms off the arm of Atlanta defender Michael Parkhurst. But no call from referee Jose Carlos Rivero, and I agree. I don't think Parkhurst had any time to react to that ball, and although his arm is outstretched, it's actually part of his natural motion in that instance. And I also think Rivero did well not to point to the spot after this challenge by Orlando goalkeeper Joe Bendik on Atlanta's Tito Villalba. I think Bendik beats him by a hair to this 50-50 ball. And for my money, this was the best decision of the week. Then we end at Rio Tinto Stadium, where Real Salt Lake and Sporting Kansas City drew one all. RSL struck first, and this is a great job by assistant referee Apolinar Mariscal, keeping the flag down on the run by RSL's Joao Plata, which leads to the opening goal. Sporting KC equalized on this 59th minute Benny Failhaber penalty kick, earned by Failhaber himself, and I can't argue with that call by referee Nima Sagafi. That's a foul by RSL debutant Marcelo Silva, and Failhaber converts. The visitors wanted a penalty just a few minutes earlier, but to me this is a bit of embellishment by Sporting's Diego Rubio in the box, and the referee Sagafi doesn't fall for it. Now, RSL thought they had the go-ahead goal in the 62nd minute, but benchside assistant referee Jason White raised the flag on forward Luis Silva. This broadcast freeze frame isn't the ideal angle, but that was a tight call. Then things really got heated in the second half when Sporting KC were appealing for a second yellow to be shown to RSL Sunday Steven. But it never came, and I agree with Sagafi. This is your typical run-of-the-mill clip. I don't think it warranted a yellow. But it was a different story in my opinion in the 76th minute when Sporting's Gerson Fernandez sticks his studs into RSL's Luke Mulholland. He gets a yellow card from the referee, but I thought this was red card worthy as he goes over the ball and into the player's shin with complete disregard for the player's safety. But the biggest talking point in this game came when Joao Plata hit the deck in the 70th minute. The replay shows 6'4 Saad Abdul Salam with his right arm around the neck of the 5'2 Plata, who goes down. But Sagafi doesn't call a foul, probably ruling that Plata went down a little too easy. In my opinion, the replays make a compelling argument for a foul, which likely would have also meant a red card for Abdul Salam for denial of an obvious goal scoring opportunity. Real Salt Lake head coach Mike Petke was dismissed for his protests around that play, and later in his post game news conference, he even brought a freeze frame print out of the incident to make his case. We have a player put through on a breakaway. Could have been a breakaway. You see. The still frame right here of him in a headlock, in a freaking headlock. Nothing is called. What did you think of that play? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. That's all for us for now. Until next time, for our editor Rich Hernandez, I'm Simon Borg. See you next time.